No matter what else is happening in the world. There is always good news today. Welcome to Good News Today, the program where you will always find good news, no matter what else is happening in the world. I'm Mark Teske, the co-producer of Good News Today, and I'm sitting in for Jim for the next several weeks. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of the program. As always, I want to tell you what's coming your way on today's program. Of course, we'll begin with our devotional time, as we always do, that consists of our scripture reading, beautiful singing, and a brief study of our scripture. Today, we're going to be looking at the Apostle Paul's description of himself in relation to God's grace from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. So you can get your Bibles out and turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1, and we'll begin there in just a moment. Again, thanks so much for being with us. Let's read from Paul's inspired letter to Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me, because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man. But I obtained mercy, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant, with faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief.
as Paul begins his inspired epistle to Timothy, he's just been addressing the need for the law really to help sinners get their lives straightened out. And in our text that we're reading here today, Paul is really establishing his right to talk to those who are engaged in sinful activities. You see, he's addressing his sinful past. And Paul had done horrible things in his life. As we first hear of him in Scripture, he was imprisoning and killing people merely because they were Christians. In Acts chapter 8, verse 1, he was consenting to the death of the first martyr that we have recorded in Scripture, Stephen. Then we get to the very next chapter, Acts chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, he asked the chief priest for permission to travel 200 miles away to Damascus for the sole purpose of rounding up Christians so they could be imprisoned. As a result of these things that Paul had done, he referred to himself in our passage as the chief of sinners. You see, Paul never forgot where he came from. He never forget, forgot what he had done to oppose God. And the sorrow that he had for that continued on and motivated him through his life. We see in this passage his great humility and his need for God's grace. And that humility that he had and that need for grace that was ever before him and kept him grounded. You see, Paul had great credentials. He was obviously a very intelligent man uh, that was given a very special commission by the Lord himself. But we don't see an arrogance from Paul. We see that humility because he realized where he came from. And now, as we read his letter to Timothy, he's working as God's main apostle to the Gentiles, all those nations throughout the world. A few things we can learn from this text. First off, there is no way we can commit a sin that cannot be cleansed by the blood of Christ. You can't out -sin God's ability to forgive you. Now, I don't know what you've done in your life. You don't know what I've done in my life. But God can still forgive us. That great sacrifice on the cross is so powerful, it can overcome any sin that we commit. If you're willing to give up that sin and meet God's conditions of pardon, you can be forgiven. All you have to do is what He has asked you to do. And that sin, no matter how grievous, can be forgiven. I really don't know what you've done, but I know what he has done on his cross. And that blood, that forgiveness is total and complete. You know, once one becomes a child of God, it's not that you're barely entering into the kingdom. No, when you become a child of God, as, as you come out of the watery grave of baptism, you're fully into his kingdom, just as much as anybody else, because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Those sins that we have committed, if we've truly obeyed his, his rules of pardon and we have repented of that sin, it's gone. There's another thing that we need to understand that the Apostle Paul, even though his life was filled with sin, egregious sin, he was still youthful in the kingdom of God. I don't know what you've done in your life. I don't know what you've been through. But just like Paul, you can be useful in the kingdom today. Don't allow your past sins to keep you from being the kind of person that God would have you to be. We need to understand God's grace, understand God's forgiveness, and live as forgiven people when we've done what he said. Forgiveness is so beautiful, 
God's grace that was shown to Paul and was shown to me can be shown to you as well. And that is truly good news for us today.